So thankful you're here today. Glad you're in the sanctuary. Glad you're in your automobile. Uh, and uh, I just believe God wants to bless you. Uh, I don't believe that we've come to, for God to just say, well, I, uh, you know, I'm glad you showed up. There's a reason that we God wants us to show up. And, you know, he shows up too. He comes too. He's here. He's been here. And he'll, he will be here. Praise the Lord. Appreciate your, your giving. Uh, you know, as our, we know that we put passing the plates around, you know, just uh, when we had to start doing things a little different. But uh, you've been gracious and you've hunted them if you didn't know where they're at. And I, I'm thankful for that. God will bless you. Somebody said, well, I you know, need to carry this uh, to the church because the church might need it. I want to say it this way. You know, uh, I believe that we need the blessing that comes from us being obedient to God. Yes. This is why we need to think about tithing and offering because we need the blessing that comes from being obedient to God to God. And uh, as I started looking at it in those that matter many years ago, you know, I, I realized I'm I'm not doing this out of obligation only. I believe it is a responsibility. But I'm I'm doing it with expectancy. Not trying to buy anything from God. You don't pay God for what he does. But through obedience to him, he will bless us. He will bless us. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19. It's just, there's one word there that I want us to notice and I want us to think about. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19. which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth in that within the veil, which hope we have as an anchor. If we've ever needed an anchor, we need an anchor today. Yes. You know, we're, we, we don't have to back up and go rehash things that's happening. But we need an anchor. And I believe it's the church, the power of God within the church that's holding Satan and the Antichrist even at bay today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, minister to us and through us today, Lord. Let the words, God, that come from my mouth be that that you want it to be. Lord, we know that thou art able. God, you, you are our anchor. You're the one that we need. You're the one that we can trust and depend upon today, Lord. And so, Father, help us to grasp a hold of that. Lord, you are our hope. You are our, you are our hope, Lord. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Help us to get a, a hold of it one more time. God, that you are dependable in Jesus' name. Amen. It's obvious that this world is in a turmoil. We know that. We understand that. The things that once seemed secure, the people that we once could trust, our system of government, and even our voting system is no longer dependable. The storm is raging. Sin, spiritual darkness, weakness in high places. The life that you and I have called normal may never be the same again. So you need to grasp a hold of that. So oh, I want it to be like it used to be. The life that you and I have known as normal may, may never be the same again. Hmm. The ship we call life is rocking. The ship that we call life is 
rocking and it's a reeling and water seemingly beginning to, and for some, fill up the ship and fill up the boat. The storm hasn't just begun. Now we, we like to look at the things that's happened recent, but I want to remind us the storm has not just begun. No, it's only become more intense. Brother Bozeman mentioned in the Sunday school lesson, we'll probably see more than we've been seeing. Intending to be pushed down the throats and the lives of Christians in days to come. You see, the devil has worked himself into places he should have never been allowed. Our government didn't get this corrupt overnight. You've got to understand this. The, our government did not get this corrupt overnight. Oh, but we see the news preacher. We see the destruction and the people killed at our nation's capital and other cities and towns destroyed. You know, one reason that we see the things happening in the nation's capital, we quit looking at the abortion clinics that's been taking lives for many years. We just pushed it aside. We've become accustomed to it. Oh, we didn't get this corrupt overnight. Hallelujah. Oh, I wouldn't say these things, preacher. You might offend somebody. Well, if I'd rather offend somebody as tell them they can do anything and go to heaven. Right Hallelujah. Amen. I want to tell you something this morning. We didn't get to where we are overnight. We've been drifting too far from the shore. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God's got to help me this morning. Hallelujah. But he is. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Government passes laws that are against the Word of God. Amen. That are against the laws of God. Amen. Oh, even nature would tell you some things. Glory to God. You can go down to the farm. You don't see two roosters walking arm in arm. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But, you know, God said, hey, go and replenish the earth. Huh. Amen. Two bulls can't replenish the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something, church. We haven't gotten to where we are overnight. Amen. We have backed up and become accustomed and said, let's don't get too involved. But I want to tell you something. If the church is not willing to become involved, God doesn't need the church. But he chose the church. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Well, Pope. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Pretty good, Brother Chris, but it's a heavy load to preach like this. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. But you see sin. People don't, you know, people don't look at you and smile real big when you talk about sin. So I told them in a funeral yesterday, you won't go to heaven unless you're a Christian. We can't live just any way and go to heaven. We cannot, church. You must be born again and then live for God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So hey, it's happening. It's coming against us. And part of the reason is we've drifted away from the laws of God. Yeah. We've drifted away. Oh, hallelujah. Now I'm not talking about when your socks are red or blue. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the things that the Bible condemns. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can go barefoot if you want to. You can have Jesus and live holy barefoot. You can, you can you know, have Jesus and live holy with a hundred dollar pair of shoes on. I guess if you can afford them, if you didn't steal them. 
Praise God. We need to remember the words of the writer in the book of Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, he said, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I'm going to read that again. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Glory to God. It's not a certain leader. Now, I believe we need godly leaders in office. I believe that. I believe we ought to do the best we can to put godly leaders in office. But we need to understand it's not a certain leader that has got us in the mess we're in. Sin has got us where we are today. That little word, sin, has got us there. Well, glory. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm. You see, sin always causes turmoil. Sin always costs you more than you wanted to pay. Sin always carries you farther and keeps you longer than you wanted to say. Sin. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God's been seeing what's been going on. God knows. He hasn't just turned his head and said, well, let's just look over that. You see, it's so easy when it's somebody else. And I've said this for many years, you know, and, and visiting with a family many, many years ago and talking about things and they were telling me then and it's probably been 30 plus years ago and they were saying to me about things where the church had drifted from them and then we moved on and, and then a certain subject was brought up and I noticed how the, the conversation changed just a little bit and not knowing it at the time but finding out later that you know this situation or this subject had affected their family. Yes. Hallelujah. But it doesn't matter for him or regardless if it's my family, if it's your family, if it's me or you, sin is not going to heaven. Oh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sin's not going to heaven. Amen. Well, we'll all agree with that, but sometimes we kind of Get soft on what we think sin is and sin's not. Amen. Well, you know, just there, there's enough in the Bible that we, we can live with. Hallelujah. And, and tells us what to live without. Yes, so what do we need? What do we need? What do we need to do? What do we need to do? The ship's rocking. Yeah. Christians don't know what to do. Christians have seemingly reached up and they can't get a hold of what they used to get a hold of. Well, maybe we need to go down. Hallelujah. Maybe we need to kneel down. It's the bending of the knees, the closing of the eyes, and the folding of the hands, and the confession of the mouth to the heart, to the Lord. That we probably need to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful. Those are here Wednesday night. Again. You know. We got some wonderful Christians. Here. And they come up and we just took time to pray. Yeah. Most people don't like to take time to pray. Amen. So. We come up. We call different names. We pray for them. Call their name before God. See, I'm going to say this again. I've said it before, and that's all right if they see it. We got some local preachers that only come to the courthouse if they're invited to do the devotion on Thursday morning. Sad that we don't want to go pray. Sad, church, and then we want to talk about everything else. So, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? We need to reach up. We need to get a hold of something that we call an anchor. Oh, hallelujah. It's not the government, local or, or you know, at the White House. 
that can get us through. No. It's not the local government or the White House. I said several weeks ago, if we can't clean up our own house, don't try to clean up the White House. Amen. My goodness. Glory to God. We want to skip over something to get to something else. Yes. Hallelujah. So we need to get a hold of an anchor. If we don't get a hold of an anchor, we may fall out of the ship. We may fall out of the boat. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We need to get a hold of that anchor. What is an anchor? Well, sir, that anchor is a heavy object that's lowered usually to the bottom of the bed of water by a cable or chain to keep the ship from drifting. To keep the ship from drifting. We need to get a hold of the anchor. Amen. This will help to keep us from drifting. Yes, will. This will help to keep us from drifting. Amen. We push it aside. We push it aside. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Another definition was any device that holds something else secure. Oh, God and His Word and through the power of the Spirit will hold us secure yes, amen. if we'll allow Him to. He'll hold us, church. Hallelujah. We need the security of the power of God holding us so we don't drift. Amen. A third definition that Webster gave was anything regarded as given stability or security. No, st no stability in the things of the world today like they used to be. No. No stability. Something that looks stable today may be gone tomorrow. Something that looks stable today may be gone tomorrow. Hallelujah. So right in the Word of God. Oh, in the power of His Spirit. Yes. The one Heavenly Father that sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary and shed His blood. He did it. And the blood hasn't lost its power. The blood still flow in church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Man, thank you, Jesus. Hmm. We need that stability. Stability. And I'm not talking about just the violence that's going on or the storm that's raging in the government. I'm talking about individually. Individually. There's been people, there's been Christians that haven't been stable when things was going pretty good in the world. Amen. Oh, I wouldn't say that, preacher. Well, they need to get stable. They need to become established. They need to feel secure. Secure. Oh, I'm glad I'm sheltered in the arms of Jesus. Hallelujah. The anchor holds. Hallelujah. It'll hold us, church. Hmm. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hope. Things eternal, oh, to God's unchanging hand. Wow. What hand are you holding up to? What hand are you holding up to? Hmm? What hand are you holding on? What hand are you trying to get to give you stability in this world? What hand are you? Grasping a hold of, hoping that you will feel secure. Mm. Hallelujah. We need that anchor. We need an anchor. Hallelujah. If it takes the writer tries to show the security 
of being in Christ. Tries to help us. Tries to help us. He's a safe retreat. Safe retreat for the believer. Safe retreat for the believer. It's okay. In the natural, we've seen that we've built places that we felt like we could retreat to. And some people call them storm shelters. Safety places. Safety places. Now that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But when some of the things is going wrong, you know, you can't go into your storm shelter in the natural and get rid, get away from some of this junk. So, there's security. There's a retreat in Christ for the believer. Sometimes we might just need to, you know, back up a little bit and say, Lord, you know, I, I just need to sit here today. I just need to communicate with you a little bit today. I need to close my eyes from all the circumstances that's happening. The things that's disturbed me. The things that's hurt me. The things that, you know, I, I don't believe in. And I, it looks like it's, you know, just prevailing. It looks like the devil is winning. Now, you know, I didn't say one, but I said, if you just look at what's happening, it looks like he is. Yes. So sometimes I might have to just kind of retreat. And say, God, will you just close my eyes to those things that I don't need to see? Will you just build a spiritual hedge around me and let me just rest in your presence? Yes. Yeah. Let me just feel your love. Let me just know that you're close to me. Let me know, God, that you're greater than any of the things that's happening. Baby, that's just what I need to do. I believe there's safe, a safe retreat for the believers in the Lord. Yes, and the good thing about this, you know, I told them at the funeral, I said, oh yeah, Christians ain't going to heaven. But the good thing about this, you can be a Christian if you want to be. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Well, you think some of these things are just believer, for believers? Yes, I do. But the good thing is you can be a believer if you want to be. God's no respect or person. A safe retreat. Our hope is sure. Our hope is steadfast. Our anchor is not located in the bottom of the sea. Wow. No. Our anchor is it located in the bottom of the sea? Our anchor's in heaven. And through his spirit, he lives within us. Yes. And I like to think that there's a spiritual, the spiritual connection is like that cable that would be attached to the natural anchor and the ship. Our spiritual anchor. We are attached to it through his spirit. I believe there's a spiritual chain. A spiritual connection. Yes. That the devil can't break it loose. The devil can't. He can't steal you from the hands of God. I do believe that you can say, I don't want any more of you, God. And if you do that enough, he'll leave you alone. He'll let you go your way. Amen. But if you're doing your best to hang on to God, the devil's not going to be able to steal you from the safety and the security of the hands of an almighty God. Hallelujah oh, to God. Oh. Thank God for his protection. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus sees you. He knows where you are. He knows. More and more, 
I realize, I believe we all do, we realize the things in this life are not secure, are not dependable. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I... Let me say it like this, and y'all, most of you'll understand this. I ain't got. And some people say, you ought to say, I don't have. I ain't got a lot. But more and more, I realize that the floor tarries. Somebody may be telling me how to use what I have got. We need an anchor, church. We need to know who we're holding on to. We need to know who we're holding on to. Don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let the devil deceive you. We serve an all-powerful God. Man, he made this world. I know there's some people, and, and then I, I don't want to. I'm, I'm going to preach this message one day. You know, when they're building the tower, they're trying to make a name for themselves. It didn't last long. Did it? The people that's trying to make a name for themselves today, one day God's going to show them who's still God. God's going to show them who is still God. Praise the Lord. God is going to show them who is still in charge. So don't let the devil deceive you. We serve a powerful God. Well, why hasn't he stopped some junk? One of the reasons is the church hasn't stood against sin like an altar. And he just letting us drift. I know that's like an indictment against the church. I love the church. I don't want to feel like I'm outside the church. We serve an all-powerful God. He can still part the waters. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like the children of Israel were standing. Oh, man. Look at here. I can't swim good. Too short legs to walk across the river. <laughs> the harm is behind me. Mountains on each side of me. And I try to look for a way out. And I don't really see which way to go. And all of a sudden, God says, use what you have. Use what you have. Stretch forth. And use what I've given unto you. Oh, hallelujah. And you know the story how the waters were parted. Praise the Lord. I serve a God this morning that can still part the waters. I serve a God that can drive the Lord. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yeah. He make a way where there seems to be no way. Because I look. I look out there. All I seen was the river. Look up here, see the mountain. Look over here, see the mountain. Look behind me. Here come the army of sin. I didn't see a way out. But he can make a way where there seems to be no way, church. Yes. God can make a way where there seems to be no way. Where's your, are you, who is your anchor? I could say, what is your anchor? But I don't want to say, who is your anchor? Yes. Who is your anchor? Now listen, think of it like this. This heavy object, this drop to the bottom of the sea. If for some reason it's detached 
or that chain or that cable that's holding it to the ship is no longer attached at both ends. Some people would blame the heavy object. But no, it's not the fault of the heavy object. It's the fault of somebody that did not secure it. You need to know you're secure in the Lord this morning. You need to know you're secure in the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you turn God loose and push him away, don't blame him. He loves you. He has compassion for you. And he has the power to guide you and to direct you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The anchor holds. The anchor holds. Oh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Prevail, you know, it's different than just fighting against it. All hell seems to be turned loose against the church and against God's people. But it's not going to prevail. We are going to overcome. We are going to overcome. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In our personal lives sometimes, it seems like everybody else may be doing good because there's not a devil left to fight somebody else. They're all on me. You ever felt that way? <laughs> you don't have to raise your hand. We probably all have some time. We feel like all the devils, all the little imps of hell is on us. Sometimes it feels that way. But hang on. If you're secure in the Lord, you're going to make it. Yes. You're going to make it. Hallelujah. Amen. By the help and the grace of God, you will make it. Let's stand together. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing this little course about uh, uh, I know the Lord will make a way for it. Hallelujah. I know the Lord will make a way for me. I know the Lord will make a way for me. If I live a holy one, now shut the wrong.
My dad said, I gotta find a job to support my family. And there was a few things that he couldn't put on. He said, I'm gonna hold it down. And my brother Tom had a little rocking horse. And he told Tom, I can't carry it. There's nowhere else to tie anything. It looked like Sanford and Son Problem. Tied. Hallelujah. But you know what? He wasn't going anywhere, but he was rocking. But his mind was going somewhere, Chris. I'm talking about my little brother. He wasn't moving in the natural, but his mind was going somewhere. And he began to sing the song. For the Lord will make a way for me. Hallelujah. got loud up my daddy heard him. And he looked over there at him. He said, bring that thing over here. Bring that thing over here. He found the place for it. I want to tell you something. You can feel like in this life, you're not heading anywhere. But let your mind be stayed upon the Lord and know that you're secure in God. And say, I know God will make a way. And when God hears your prayer, 